Hey, get inspired, everybody. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Life Inspired. If you've never watched our program before, it's all about turning points mostly. And um, people were walking along just regular life and there was some dot, 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 and then God moment where he kind of changed the trajectory to some new inspired thing that he wants you to do. So um, we're so glad that you could watch it. You can see this program on lifeinspiredshow.com or on YouTube or Facebook. We appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate you subscribing and liking because that helps get more people to be able to hear these wonderful stories about how God is changing lives. So our guest today is my friend from Rotary Club, Simon Springer. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you on the red couch. Yeah, and it's um, comfortable. Yeah, so we've got some basically like three questions I like to ask. You know, what was your before the dot, dot, dot kind of things were going along? I know for you, you were, you know, living in New York and sure. um, and then what was the dot, dot, dot moment that got you moving here? here and and then what tell us about your inspired life here in South Bend so yeah so sure. backstory so backstory I'm originally from Seattle Washington oh, right. a little town outside actually called Woodenville okay um, it's famous for some football players right. effectively and that's about it <laughs> um, and I grew up there um, and then when I was 16 I became Orthodox uh, Orthodox Jewish you so you were yeah you were Jewish but you were an Orthodox yes. Jewish okay. yes yes I, I uh, in the Christian fr uh, reference, I think you call it maybe a born again. I, I, I don't know if there's an, that's the right term, but it's the closest one I can think of. Right. Um, <clears throat> I graduate. Uh, I spent two years in a uh, Jewish high school in Seattle, and then I spent uh, one year in Israel in a rabbinical right. college, and then I came back to Seattle, um, and I went to the University of Washington. Okay. And then I despised college. I really, really? just it, it was kind of. It didn't kind of mesh with my lifestyle. Okay. Um, kosher, the Sabbath, oh, right. um, just a more conservative uh, uh, lifestyle. Um, and I spent three and a half years there, and then I gave my parents an ultimatum that um, either I'm going to go finish my, my degree in New York okay. um, at a rabbinical college, or I'm going to move to Israel, um, which is still a goal of mine at some point or another, but you know, I'm here for now. Right. Um, so I, m I went to New York. My parents sent me to New York. Okay. Um, and I went there and I was there for 15 years. I met my, my wife. I had three kids, uh, finished my degree, thankfully, and um, just kind of, it just kind of, you know, 15 years is a very long time. Right. It's a very long time. Right. And, you know, if I'm only 38 years old, it's a long time. And um, at some point, my wife and I were talking about leaving New York. Okay. And the reason why we want to leave New York is it's expensive, it's busy, mm -hmm. it's dirty. <clears throat> there's a lot. There's a lot going on. And um, we just felt it necessary to kind of get out. So we were looking for a community. Um, and in the United States, there's Jewish communities all over the United States. Um, ones that fit our philosophical bend. Um, one of them. You know, we were looking at the Cleveland, which has a nice big community, and somewhere in, in Texas as well. And then all of a sudden, South Bend came up. Okay. And uh, we came to visit. Six and a half weeks later, we were here. We wow. loved it so much. It was just, there's so much potential, not only for business and for, you know, uh, making a living, but also a good place for to raise kids. Sure. And a place where I, as an Orthodox Jew, and very openly and you know I play the part um, I didn't feel any any derision or you know anything against me being right, orthodox in right. fact it was the opposite uh, effect um, you feel comfortable uh, being you here I feel very comfortable being me here and you know, I tell people all the time and I and I did say this at Rotary at one point is that um, the, the last two months of me being in New York in a very Jewish neighborhood I even encountered more anti-Semitism there than now almost my three years here. I've, I haven't experienced a, 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 an ounce of it here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, whether it's, you know, I couldn't tell you if it's just because it's the neighborhood, but I think one of the, <clears throat> the underlying themes of this neighborhood, one of the things that I was just telling you, is that it's a godly neighborhood. Mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. you know, we're in Catholicville, USA, mm -hmm. and people are you know, churchgoers, mm -hmm. and they try to be good Christians or, or, or whatever dom denomination they are. Mm -hmm. um, it, it shows a level of religious tolerance, mm -hmm. uh, but acceptance, acceptance as well. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. they see someone like me 
shown up here. Right. And instead of saying, oh, that, that guy's different, they're saying, right. oh, another guy that lives the values right. that we live. And it's, right. it's really, it's so beautiful. Right. It's really so beautiful. Right. So like we're in Rotary together yes. and the Rotary motto is service above self. Yes. So it's all about thinking of others, putting others first. And um, Simon knows that I'm a Jesus follower. And he said, you know, the first commandment was love God. And the second was love others. And that's kind of how I always want to live my life is love God and sure. love others. And I feel like, you know, Rotary's like that. Yes. And, yes. Um, and I, and I love, I, I agree. I've been in your neighborhood before and I mm. love where you live. I don't know your specific house, but right. I know the neighborhood you live in. And, um, and it's really awesome to see people loving God and loving others wherever they go. Without, and without, without any, any, um, silliness behind it, it's kind of a live and let live. I'm happy being me. You're happy being you. And, and I don't have to sit there and try to convince you right. and, and, and vice versa. Right. Uh, being godly, there, there's so many different paths to get to the same place. As long as you get to the same place and you have shared goals and shared visions, how you get there is really kind of inconsequential. And um, and you know, a lot of a lot of my friends, I've even made friends. You know, we make the joke: a rabbi and a pastor walk into a coffee bar, and and um, it's happened. There's a pastor I went to go get coffee with, and he had his whole. I, You'll have to excuse me. I don't know if it's a, the, the right, the, collar. yeah, the clerical collar right. and all that stuff, and then me looking as I do, and I, you could see people's heads kind of go. There's a joke here, <laughs> and I don't know if it's appropriate to say it, but I'm gonna laugh anyway. And right. then you know we got past it, and we had a cup of coffee together. It was really nice, you know. And right. um, it, it's a, it's just a, it's really nice. It, it's like I said, right. it was a nice neighborhood. It's nice. A, a, it's nice to be able to be comfortable who you are right. without feeling any sense of, you know, you're right. the other, right. which is always problematic just in general. Right. So. And I didn't think to ask you before sure. we were on air, so I don't know sure. if this is okay to ask you, but always. what exactly happened when you were 16 that made you go, oh, no, okay. I want to be Orthodox. What exactly turned you at that point? So where I grew up, um, Seattle is generally a less religious place. Now there is, you know, certainly there's sure. religion and stuff sure. like that. Okay, you never, Everywhere. but it just sure. happens to be a less religiously oriented place. Okay. And um, I grew up non-religious. My, both of my parents are, are, are non-religious. They're very proud Jews, mm -hmm. um, but more culturally. I mean, and, right. and, you know, side note, the last time anyone in my family, in the Springer family line, was religious was in the 1600s. I did a wow. little bit of genealogy. Wow. And there's, you know, a, another story behind there. But regardless, um, as a kid, as you do, you kind of fall, you can, it's easy to fall into the wrong crowds, especially if you don't have, if you don't live a life that has some guidelines. Mm -hmm. And my parent, I wasn't a bad kid. I wasn't stealing. I wasn't, sure. but you get it, you fall into the wrong crowds and you do silly things and Seattle being the kind of the culture it is, you kind of, Whatever. So it, ten, by tenth grade, I was, you know, just being a stupid teenager, and um, my parents. The, at the, in that time, the Jewish high school was the number one Jewish, uh, the number one school in the state of Washington. Wow. So if you if you graduated with a 4.0, let's say University of Washington would take you, would have like a 4.3 GPA, 4.4 GPA. It was a really good. It was almost a preparatory school. Wow. So I had the ability, because I was Jewish, to go to that school. My parents sent me, you know, kind of put me on the straight and narrow. And then, so I was actually, I got the, the, the letter um, saying I was in on my birthday, in the middle of the summer. Wow. And um, they said, you're going to have to wear a yarmulke. You have to wear the tzitzis, I'm sorry, the, the fringes that okay. you, know, you see here. Okay. Um, I said, okay. Because the whatever. school was orthodox. Yeah, the school was orthodox, and, okay. and you know, play the part. Um, and... I said, okay. So my mom bought them. I don't even know, where, I don't even know idea where she got them. Um, and so that was the beginning of the journey. Okay. Um, the beginning of the journey is like, I was doing it because everyone else was doing it and I didn't really understand it. Um, but I did it. And so, I mean, what did I know? Right, right. right. Um, I kept kosher to what I thought would be kosher, um, et cetera. Um, the transition to me becoming from observant to, in the in the Yiddish term, from, which means there's actually a thought behind it. There's actually maybe feel. God. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to. This lifestyle is for me. Um, it's and it's more. It's deeper than just kind of like that surface, whatever. 
was I was in rabbinical college in, in Israel um, in, a, in a, uh, neighborhood, a neighborhood called Bayit Vigan, which is kind of right on the outskirts of uh, Jerusalem. And we took a trip up to the city of Tzfat, which is the north near the, the, the Galilee. Okay. The, uh, you know, the Canary of the Galilee, that area. And um, it was Friday night, so the, we're starting the Sabbath, and we're mm -hmm. starting a lot of stuff, and we're in a synagogue that is easily several hundred years old. Um, you know, I know it was built probably in the 1400s, wow. but they called it the Rabbi Yosef Karo Shul, and he was around the 1500s, maybe 1600s, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And throughout the years, you know, there was uh, earthquakes in that area in the 1800s, uh -huh. so all the windows were just like a little off. Wow. And it was all those big stones, like just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So the sun's going down over the rolling hills of the Galilee. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the Kinneret, which is the, the lake, the Galilee, the, the lake. The uh, Sea of Galilee? The Sea of Galilee, I'm sorry, okay. yes. Okay. Um, in, modern, in modern Israeli terms, they call it the Kinneret. When okay. you say, when you hear the Kinneret rose, it means that they're the, the, um, they're getting a is nice enough. Is yeah, no, they're getting the nice enough rain because it's the main water source for the state of Israel. Oh, okay. Um, so, so I'm looking at this beautiful picturesque um, picture Cock through a, a, a cockeyed um, window, and all you start getting those the feelings, you know, the, whatever the feelings, and then they're singing and there's dancing. We're singing the the Friday night prayers, and I'm six five, and at that time I was much heavier. Um, and this guy must have been seven foot wow. and just a big guy. And he was Hasidic, he had a big beard and he had big, the side locks. Right. And he grabbed my hand and we started dancing and his big booming voice, just something about it, just like stars aligned, everything clicked. And I went, yeah, I want okay, that. I hear, I hear, like that's, I'm right there. That's and then, awesome. and then uh, throughout the years, I mean, that was 1999, 2000, and today, you know, we're in 2020 now. So throughout the years, I've, I, I, you know, I've grown in different ways. I've different philosophical bends within that Orthodox Judaism. Right. Um, I'm more Hasidic now. Um, I'm more what in Israel, if you hear the news, you hear the Haredi, um, which just means someone who trembles before God. Um, I'm more that bend um, than I was previously, but the underlying the underlying theme remained the same, uh -huh. that there's something very special about this lifestyle for me. Um, and I wanted to live that lifestyle. I wanted to live the lifestyle that people told me I should be li living. Not religious people, but the people that picked on me for being Jewish. Or, the, or when I was in, in public school and, and I was made to, you know, not made per se, but I was made to sing the Christmas carols and all that stuff because mm -hmm. I, was, I was always the Jewish kid. I was always so much Jewish friend and now I was part of something and it was, it was, it was new, it was interesting, right. but it, it meant something. There was right. a lot of feeling behind it and it kind of validated everything that I had gone through, I, not to say my previous life, but for lack of a better term, my previous life. Right, yeah, right, the right. years prior. Sure. Right, right. Sure. It was a... Uh, yeah, that's and that, awesome. that's kind of that journey. And then right. here, you know, I've been I've been Orthodox for about twenty years, twenty two years, uh -huh. and um, here I feel like I've I've kind of cemented it now. Mm -hmm. You know, in New York, you're one of you're you're a number, mm -hmm. and not in not a bad way. Just like there's so many, there's so many options, synagogues, schools, rest, kosher restaurants, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Mm -hmm. You you just kind of fall into. A, a rut or you know just a singular way of doing things here because of the lack of options we only have one Jewish school technically three because we have a boys high school and a, and a girls high school and then okay. the day school um, two synagogues two Orthodox synagogues I'm sorry uh, one place to get kosher meat and cheese and you know right. get a burger right I had to become very self-aware mm -hmm. and very um, confident who I am as an Orthodox Jew, how I present myself, certainly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's probably, besides for the, the amazingness of the area, it's, it's probably the best move I've ever made because it made me stronger in my faith and That's it made awesome. str me stronger in my practice. But also it showed my kids who are 10, 6, and almost 3, um, it showed them that you can be proud of who you are and you never have to, you never have to be sorry, you never have to be anything like that. Um, 
be proud of who you are. Right. And if people are going to judge you, let them judge you. It's, it has nothing to do with you. It's their problem. That's true. And, right? um, you know, it, when I see my little girls and they're, they're wearing skirts and, uh, you know, they're, you know, the, the necklines and they, they wear sh uh, shirts at least up to their elbows, um, they present themselves as little Jewish girls mm -hmm. and they're not afraid to do it. And mm -hmm. they see they're running, playing on their bikes in the neighborhood. And all of our non-Jewish neighbors know, first of all, on, on the Sabbath, don't ring the doorbell if you want to talk to us. You can just knock on the door or walk right in because, you know, we're ready to have you. Um, and not to, you know, not to offer them food unless they pass by us because it could, not, it could be right. not kosher. Right. And, and everyone's been so willing and accepting to do so. It's, it's been amazing. It's That's just, awesome. And it just, again, just, it, it makes, it, it just solidifies the fact that this was the right move for us. Right. Yeah. Well, I am so grateful for your time and Thank that you, you come and share. Hey, so viewers, if you guys would um, just, you know, pray for Simon. They've got um, a great ministry. He came and wants to, like, let people in South Bend know how much the Jewish community has to offer to South Bend businesses, right? Well, it's both. It's both, too. I'm meaning, I mean, for years, it's been kind of segregated and, and insular, but because of everything that goes on in this crazy world we live in now, right. <clears throat> it's time to get out there and, and, and not be, af I don't want to say be afraid of the outside world, but again, for lack of a better term, afraid of the outside world. Get out there. Right. Be who you are and be proud of who you are. Right. But the reason why I started what I do and, and, and what I do is, is try to help Orthodox or Jewish families move into town um, for a lot of different reasons. But one of them is, um, at least for the Orthodox side of Judaism, is that we live a, a, <clears throat> a lot more of an expensive lifestyle. Kosher food, at least meat and cheese, oh, is a little more true. expensive. Okay. Um, in, in New York, when I, was, when I was there for my two girls, so three years ago, seven and four, um, tuition for them was twenty-two to $25,000 a year, depending. Wow. And they were in first grade and right. kindergarten or pre-K or whatever right. it is. Twenty for two girls, and that was with financial assistance. Wow. Um, <clears throat> the cost of living out here, plus the ability to have an opportunity to um, live like a mensch. You don't have to... You don't What's live, a mensch? Yeah, a, a, like a normal good person. You don't have to sit there and, you know, I know, I know the Christian faith is very big on not, not living off of debt. Mm -hmm. Judaism, Judaism is too, you know, the scourge of society now is one of them is, is, is credit cards. Um, and, and, and just building and building more hundreds more and right. thousands of dollars in debt, you know, per family, it's, un, it's, it's unmanageable. Right. Um, coming to a place like this where you can live the lifestyle you want to live, have the amazing opportunity because the business environment is is just phenomenal here. Right. The cost of living is phenomenal here. Right. Just all in, it's it's one of the best places in the United States for at least an Orthodox family. I mean, for I'll say for everyone, right. but for an Orthodox right. family, especially, right? It, it's it's so worth it. Right. It's so worth it to move. And the problem is, it's hard for a, an Orthodox family to kind of divorce themselves from the area they live in, because. Um, the ease, you know, again, dozens of synagogues. The, 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 the street I lived on had three synagogues. Wow. So, just on your street. And just on my street. I mean, it's a longer street, but I mean, And three we only have two in the whole county. Right, right. And then uh, three or four kosher only supermarkets. Wow. And dozens of kosher restaurants. So having that at your, at your disposal at any time, it's, it's great. Right. And it's very easy and it's very, it's wonderful, however, um, if you don't have the money to go right. to the restaurants right. and then you put yourself in debt to go get a pizza, it's not worth it. So you come right. to a place that doesn't have it, but at least you can f figure right. it out. Well, and gosh, I would think in 2020 with Amazon can deliver anything, I would think you could probably get some things. Sure. You know, sure. have things ordered in. There's certainly, and, and, and there are, there are um, companies also, fresh meat companies um, that, that will deliver. ship, sure. will ship all over the United States. Sure. Um, but um, also, you know, we have the deli here, the kosher right, deli, right. Um, that does sell fresh meat, fresh cheese, and all that stuff. Sure. Or you can go to Chicago, or you can go to Detroit if you were so apt to, or if you wanted to go to Kalamazoo, Trader Joe's always has something. Oh, cool. Um, it we just, need a Trader Joe's. We need a Trader Joe's in town. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. And um, it's, uh, 
the ease has become so much more simple in 2020. Great. Uh, besides for Amazon and all that stuff too, just the ease, every, everything happens to be, most things happen to be kosher and you can live anywhere in the United States and still keep a kosher lifestyle. It might be harder in Alabama or you know Wyoming, but in South Bend, we've got everything for an Orthodox Jew that we need here. Right, right. right. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Right. Well, thanks again. Thank you. Of All right. Thank you guys for watching. And, you know, share Simon's story with somebody that you know that needs to hear about, you know, following God in the kosher, um, in the Orthodox Jewish way. So, yeah. Thanks Please. for thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great week. Bye-bye.